When Beijing publicly confirms a first combat victory for an export fighter, it's not just an aviation headline, it's a strategic message about credibility, deterrence, and market share. On January 12th, China's State Administration of Science, Technology, and Industry for National Defense said the export-oriented J-10CE fought a real aerial engagement in mid-May, shot down several opposing aircraft, and returned without losses. Until now, the public story leaned heavily on Pakistani statements and scattered media reporting, so this is Beijing stepping into the record. Pakistan had already said its J-10C fighters helped repel Indian airstrikes during the same May escalation and that Indian aircraft were downed. Predictably, that collided with the fog of crisis, politics, propaganda, selective disclosure, and very little shareable hard evidence. So China's confirmation matters less as an after-action report and more as a stamp that the export variant was used in combat and produced results. In defense exports, combat proven is not a slogan, it's a pricing multiplier. But notice what China did not do. It did not name the adversary, it did not name the country, it did not specify whether this was beyond visual range or within visual range or what weapons were used. That omission isn't sloppy, it's messaging by design. Claim the upside of validation while minimizing diplomatic cost and avoiding details that could be challenged later. The statement is simultaneously specific enough to sell and vague enough to survive. Even with those boundaries, the timing strongly points to the India-Pakistan flare-up in May. And if that's the theater, then the first thing to get right is what modern air combat looks like. It's not a sporting match between aircraft brochures. It's a systems fight. Sensors, data links, electronic warfare, airborne early warning, training, and the quality of the tactical picture each side can build before a pilot even sees a target. So the headline, Leiko, J-10CE victory, is likely shorthand for a kill chain that held together under pressure long enough to produce confirmed effects. Ask yourself, what does several aircraft shot down with no losses most plausibly mean in a controlled confrontation between nuclear armed states? The least escalatory, most survivable option is beyond visual range combat inside short time windows with strict rules of engagement and a heavy focus on not losing pilots. That points to long range missiles, cooperative targeting and the side that can see first and shoot first. If you're expecting gun camera footage, you're probably looking at the wrong era. This is also where the J-10C slash CE family fits. It's not stealth, but it's built to be relevant in a radar dense environment. Modern radar, modern countermeasures and integration into a network. In Pakistani service, the jet matters because it sits inside a broader stack of Chinese supplied capabilities. And that's the real export pitch, not just a fighter, but a coherent bundle that can generate credible air combat power without Western suppliers. That bundle is why a first confirmed combat result is commercially explosive. On paper, everyone has an ASA radar, everyone claims advanced electronic warfare, everyone sells missiles with dramatic range figures, but buyers don't spend billions on paper, they spend on confidence. Combat use tests what exercises can hide, maintenance rhythms under pressure, communications discipline, missile guidance in messy conditions, and human performance when the cost of a mistake is a dead pilot and a national crisis. Still, don't fall into the trap of reading combat proven as universally superior. One engagement can validate that the jet can operate, that its weapons can guide, that its networking can hold, and that its crews can execute. It does not prove dominance in a prolonged campaign against a fully mobilized peer. The honest analytic question is narrower. What capabilities did this likely demonstrate, and what narrative does China want the world to absorb? China's announcement explicitly frames the result as proof that its aviation technology is practical, reliable, and competitive. That's not just pride, it's a sales thesis aimed at customers who can't access Western jets or who fear sanctions and spare parts politics but who still need credible air defense. Beijing is signaling that its exports are crossing a threshold, not only delivered but used in combat with outcomes China is willing to publicly own. Then think about weapons and targeting. If the engagement was largely beyond visual range, the decisive factor isn't only the fighter's radar, it's the targeting architecture around it. Long-range missiles still need clean tracks, mid-course updates, and enough end-game energy to threaten a maneuvering target. That typically means data links and airborne early warning doing the heavy lifting. So if a J-10CE was the shooter, the broader story may be Pakistan's ability to run a networked find, fix, track, engage chain in real time instead of fighting as isolated platforms. There's also a second audience, India, and indirectly Western suppliers. Pakistan's earlier narrative included claims about high-end Western aircraft being brought down. Whether every detail of that claim holds up or not, the implication is uncomfortable. Modern fighters are only as good as the environment they fight in, and beyond visual range threats are getting harder to dismiss. If an opponent can combine competent training, airborne sensors, and long-range missiles, then the margin for error shrinks fast, even for expensive fleets.
India, of course, has strong incentives to contest Pakistani claims and protect its own deterrence story. And that's why outside observers should stay disciplined. Air forces don't publish radar tapes and data link logs in public, not when those files reveal methods and vulnerabilities. So the public record becomes a mix of official statements, selective leaks, and pieces of wreckage analysis. The right approach is to watch for convergence. Independent authentication, consistent third-party reporting, and credible technical forensics that line up across multiple sources. And here is the deeper consequence that tends to be missed. Once a system is used in combat, it enters a feedback loop. It generates data about what worked, what failed, what jammed, what broke, and what crews struggled to fix. That data accelerates iteration. So even if you never get a clean public timeline of the May engagement, the strategic signal is clear. Chinese export aviation is no longer being judged only in exercises. It's being judged in the real world, and China is confident enough to advertise it. So when you hear J-10CE first combat victory, don't just picture a missile shot and a falling aircraft. Picture procurement officers in third countries updating risk calculations. Picture competitors preparing counter-briefings. Picture India and Pakistan hardening narratives for domestic audiences. And ask the question that matters for the next crisis. Who will see first, decide first, and shoot first? And whose industrial base will adapt fastest when the lessons are painful? Because in air combat, the real victory isn't the kill. It's convincing everyone you can do it again. If you want more analysis like this, where we cut through marketing fog and hype, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.